Have you ever thought of starting a Bricklink store? Maybe you've watched videos like this, or maybe you've seen how the price of Lego sets increase over time, and think it might be a great way to fund the hobby, or generate an income by selling sets, parts, or minifigures. You've come to the right place. In this video, we take a thorough look at all the aspects to sell and succeed on Bricklink in 2024. We'll look at the must-have requirements, and what you need to make it work. We'll also look at what you should do to make the process go more smoothly. So who are we and why should you listen to this advice? Well, we're Kiwi Brick Exchange and I run the store with my young daughter and like the name says, we're based over here in New Zealand. We opened just over six months ago in September of 2023. So far, we've done $6,000 of sales and counting and we were overseas for a month at that time. We've gone from one set of Lego to over 35,000 parts and minifigures. A $200 initial investment to now $10,000 of stock. We have an extremely limited storage space here, three cupboards and a small desk to work from. We started in a relatively small market. We don't get the same kind of deals that you would in places like the US through stores like eBay or larger retail stores. And here's a bit of a secret. We didn't really know much about Bricklink to start either. In fact, my first ever purchase on Bricklink was to try and part out a uni kitty set. Yeah, not the best investment. But if we managed to start a Bricklink store, than anyone can. But this video should provide some cautionary tales about what not to do when starting out on Bricklink. Lego is one of the world's most recognized brands and Lego sales show no sign of slowing down. Just last year, over 220 million sets of Lego were sold worldwide, with the Lego group bringing in around 9.5 billion US dollars worth of sales. But what is Bricklink? Well, Bricklink's an online platform, being one of the largest online marketplaces for selling Lego. It's a great way for people to sell Lego parts. The platform is one of the most recognizable places for Lego fans to buy their Lego from, and Lego pieces are organized by their part number, and customers can pick and choose parts that they need for their own creations, or for minifigures that they are collecting. It's similar to Lego's Pick-A-Brick, but parts can either be used or new, and generally have a much wider range than what Lego are currently producing. It isn't the only platform out there, and more on this later, but it is the one we would recommend when starting out selling Lego. So what should you do when starting a Bricklink store? Well here is what you must have. You need your own Bricklink account, so make sure you've gone to bricklink.com and created an account before watching the rest of this video. You obviously need some Lego. You also need one positive feedback on Bricklink. To do this, place an order on Bricklink, from somewhere like Kiwi Brick Exchange, and then once you have feedback, you'll be able to click the upgrade to a seller button. Then, apply to be a seller on Bricklink. The process to apply is straightforward. You upload identification and a photo of you with your Lego stock. Then wait for Bricklink to approve you. From chatting to other sellers, this process can take anywhere from one to two weeks. During this time, work on getting your store ready. But what do you actually need to get started? Well, first of all, you need a device. The majority of your time will be uploading parts, picking orders, and keeping track of your store. You obviously need a device for this, and we use a laptop and an iPhone currently. You want to have something that is able to be moved around for picking orders, so a tablet or an iPad can come in handy. However, we prefer a laptop. A phone is used when identifying used parts using apps like BrickScan or BrickIgnize. You need storage containers, and make sure you get the right organizers from the start, a mix of smaller and larger ones. The organizers you see behind me are great for storing smaller quantities and smaller parts. But for larger parts, why don't you consider something like a bulk storage bin? You likely have a couple of these around the house already, and they can be used to store larger quantities or larger parts. Within these organizers, we like to store things in Ziploc bags. Here are some bulk minifigures that are within a little bag, and then a larger bag here with a simple label. There's really effective ways to store your Lego. You also need to consider the storage space that you have wherever you're storing your Lego. Even when you think you have enough, you might realize that you need a bit more space to store a few more containers. Have you got a cupboard or a wardrobe to store sets? And what are you gonna do for those larger quantities? When you're parting out a set or organizing Lego, have you got a desk space to be able to use? Having the space to store and organize your Lego is vital. We'll also look at a volume per location. The craft organizers behind me have 60 different compartments with dividers in the middle. The drawers behind me store pieces that are about 16 deep by about five or six high and wide. And we'll link a couple of places where you can buy these in the description below. You should though be able to buy them at most local craft stores. 
It's also really important to think about how you're going to store these organizers in your storage space so they're easily accessible when picking orders. There's no one size fits all, so you need to consider your own space and think about some of the things we've mentioned today. Anything that doesn't fit in any of these boxes goes in our larger bins, which we call oversized boxes. You also need to consider how do you actually plan to ship your orders out. Postage options would differ for every country. In New Zealand, we currently use New Zealand Post to send out all of our orders. They're fairly reliable and are pretty good at solving problems when they arise. Take the time to research and ask around. The last thing you want to be doing as a BrickLink seller is trying to sort out issues when things do not get delivered. So don't just go for the cheapest option. A reliable postal service is really, really key. You need to think about how you're going to package your order. We use these mailers, which come in a range of sizes, and just add some bubble wrap around the order. We also put each item in a snap lock bag to ensure that our items don't get damaged in the post. You may want to consider a box. However, we've found that most of the time, these mailers do the job. I am yet to have any Lego damaged in these mailers, but with more expensive items, you may want to consider sending in a box. You also need some money. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. What initial cash do you have to invest into your BrickLink store? BrickLink is an investment, and some parts will take some time to sell. And what should you have when starting your BrickLink store? Well, you need a good knowledge of Lego and Lego parts. What parts are used for what? What parts sell well? This is really important information to have when opening your store. This knowledge will take some time to grow, so we'd encourage you to watch a range of different sellers who provide some tips on YouTube. You also need a good knowledge of BrickLink and how BrickLink works. Be familiar with the website. Buy a couple of times first. BrickLink can be quite tedious. When setting up your store, consider these different things as well. What are your payment options and how do you go about setting this up? What shipping options do you have and where are you going to ship to? What do you want people to see when they first come to your splash page? And what terms and conditions do you want to have on your page? Looking at Kiwi Brick Exchange here, you can see we've got a range of different terms and conditions for people when purchasing from our store. How do orders actually work when they get them? What are all the different numbers on the page? And we encourage you to buy three or four times from stores to actually see how the system works. And you need to consider your pricing. The great thing about selling on BrickLink is you have access to the average price that parts are selling for. This is often over the last six months, and you can also see the price of sellers in your area. Consider using the software BrickStore to help with this process, and I've linked a video in the description below showing you how to use this. To find the average price on BrickLink, type in the part number in the box up the top, then scroll down and click on Price Guide. You'll see here the average price of the parts that have sold in the last six months is listed. It's easy to access the different colors, and you can also select by your region as well. Clicking this button here will also give you an option to look at what's sold in particular currencies. This is really important if you're just looking at a certain area like us in New Zealand. You need a brand. Brickling is not just about running a store. You need to think about all the different ways to attract customers to buy from your store. What is ultimately going to make the difference in people buying from your store compared to another one? And why not include an order card like this one here? We include this in every order and we use the design program called Canva to make this in about 10 minutes. The place that we ordered this from, these cost about 5 or 10 cents New Zealand. Our 10% voucher code for returning customers is one that helps build your store as a place that people regularly go to to place their orders. The one limit on your growth is always going to be orders, so why not encourage your buyers to buy from you again? Social media. This is one that is completely underestimated by BrickLink owners. Social media, when used correctly, can help drive buyers to your BrickLink store. It's a free way to communicate out to potential customers, and we've even had sales directly through our outreach on social media. Establishing a presence on social media is a fantastic way to set yourself apart from other BrickLink or Lego resellers. Make sure that you get your customer service right. Reaching out with a clear message when there are issues, solving buyers' problems early on, packaging goods, carefully. These are all things you need to do really well, but particularly when starting out. You also need quite a lot of these. These are part out containers. When you take a set and part it out into its individual parts, you're going to need a really good system of organizing them to quickly get them into your organizers. 
Buying new and sealed sets on a discount is a great way of adding inventory to your store. But when you do this, you need a range of part out containers like this. We normally look for 2.5 or 3 times the value of a set when uploading it to Bricklink. Try to avoid buying sets at full retail value. And you need a lot of patience. As we said before, it's not a get rich quick scheme. Bricklink and Lego reselling takes time. It takes time to part out a set. It takes time to find deals. It takes time to put parts into your organizers. It takes a lot of time to find deals on Lego. But this is something that we really enjoy and is quite a fun part of the process. To use the analogy, it's a marathon and not a sprint. You need to think of your Bricklink store as an investment or just a hobby to begin with. Don't worry if you go a few days without an order. Keep uploading parts and you'll see them start to come in. This will not start you on a full-time income and anyone that tells you the same is just incorrect. But it might be close to full-time hours, so be prepared to put in the time and have the patience. The great thing about Bricklink though is you can put in as much or as little time as you have available. When I have a busy week at work and my full-time job, my parts are all there still for customers to browse and place orders. So now you're at the point and you've been convinced that it's time to get started. What's the best way to go about starting? Well, my first recommendation would be to start small. You don't need huge stock to begin with. We started our store on a $200 investment. Remember, your parts may take some time to sell. So think about scaling your business as you start having orders coming in. You want it to be sustainable. If you have a low amount of money to invest with, start with used Lego. Look for bolt lots with minifigures. eBay, Marketplace, Yard or Garage Sales. When you're looking for a bolt plot, you can consider a few things. What's the condition of the pieces? What's the overall weight? And what value are you going to be getting? We've also shown you our full process for sorting used Lego, and I'll put a link in the description below. Otherwise, if money's not an issue, go with new pieces. The time to part out is quicker. There's no need to identify the pieces, you just need to organise them into the types in your part out containers, and it's much easier to upload to Bricklink. Focus on minifigures early in your store journey. Minifigures don't take up a lot of space, but can often provide really good value for you as you're starting out. This can be a great way to source initial stock and to build up your store value as bulk lots often come with a range of minifigures. Diversify early. What we mean by this is different parts and different methods of selling. Why don't you try to sell minifigures on eBay as well or other platforms like Brickow or even just locally on places like Marketplace. Our store mainly started reselling here on our version of eBay called Trade Me. It generally has a higher sell through rate, but you do need to consider the fees for each platform. Programs like Brick Freedom help to sync your store between Bricklink and Brickow so that you can have your inventory on two different platforms reaching two different sets of customers. Now though, we generally only sell full sets on Marketplace to avoid the higher fees on places like eBay. And finally, schedule and time each day to grow your store. This is something that we are slowly getting better at. But scheduling in specific time to work on your store is really important. Try and upload some parts or minifigures every single day. But at the very least, work on your brand. Work on your processes. Work on preparing your store. Clean that Lego. Pick those orders the day they come in. Keep looking for Lego deals. And enjoy the process. While we are only six months into our journey selling on Bricklink, it is a fun and enjoyable way to make a bit of money We've tried to cover as many different ideas in this video. But if you feel that we've missed something along the way, or you have any questions, feel free to post a comment below and we'll do our best to respond to it. And while you're at it, consider watching this video here, which was what we thought at the time was our best haul ever.